Cancer Vaccine, Wikipedia Article Audio A cancer vaccine is a vaccine that either treats existing cancer or prevents development of a cancer. Vaccines that treat existing cancer are known as therapeutic cancer vaccines. Traditional Vaccines Method Clinical Trials Approved Oncovaccines Abandoned Research Desirable Characteristics Antigen Candidates Hypothesized Problems Recommendations Some slash many of the vaccines are autologous, being prepared from samples taken from the patient, and are specific to that patient. Some researchers claim that cancerous cells routinely arise and are destroyed by the immune system, and that tumors form when the immune system fails to destroy them. Some types of cancer such as cervical cancer and some liver cancers, are caused by viruses. Traditional vaccines against those viruses, such as HPV vaccine and hepatitis B vaccine, prevent those types of cancer. These vaccines are not further discussed in this article. Other cancers are to some extent caused by bacterial infections. Traditional vaccines against cancer-causing bacteria are not further discussed in this article. One approach to cancer vaccination is to separate proteins from cancer cells and immunize patients against those proteins as antigens, in the hope of stimulating the immune system to kill the cancer cells. Research on cancer vaccines is underway for treatment of breast, lung, colon, skin, kidney, prostate, and other cancers. Another approach is to generate an immune response in situ in the patient using oncolytic viruses. This approach was used in the drug Talamogeny Leherparapvec, a version of herpes simplex virus engineered to selectively replicate in tumor tissue and to express the immune stimulatory protein GMCSF. This enhances the anti-tumor immune response to tumor antigens released following viral lysis and provides a patient-specific vaccine. In a phase 3 trial of follicular lymphoma, Investigators reported that the Biovax ID prolonged remission by 44.2 months, versus 30.6 months for the control. On April 14, 2009, Dendrian Corporation announced that their Phase 3 clinical trial of Cipula CLT, a cancer vaccine designed to treat prostate cancer, had demonstrated an increase in survival. It received U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval for use in the treatment of advanced prostate cancer patients on April 29, 2010. On April 8, 2008, New York-based company Antigenics announced that it had received approval for the first therapeutic cancer vaccine in Russia. It is the first approval by a regulatory body of a cancer immunotherapy. The treatment, oncophage, increased recurrence-free survival by a little more than a year according to the results of a Phase three clinical trial. The approval is for a subset of kidney cancer patients who are at intermediate risk for disease recurrence. It awaits approval in the US and EU. But will need a new trial for FDA approval. Interim results from a Phase three trial of Talamogeny Leherparapvec in melanoma showed a significant tumor response compared to administration of GMCSF alone. Oncophage was approved in Russia in 2008 for kidney cancer. It is marketed by Antigenics Inc. Cipula CLT, PROVNG was approved by the FDA in April 2010 for metastatic hormone refractory prostate cancer. It is marketed by Dendrian Corp. CancerVax, Genitope Corp. and FavID are examples of cancer vaccine projects that have been terminated, 
both due to poor phase 3 results. Cancer vaccines seek to target a tumor-specific antigen and distinct from self-proteins. Selection of the appropriate adjuvant to activate antigen-presenting cells to stimulate immune responses, is required. Bacillus calmetgarin, an aluminum-based salt, and a squalene oil water emulsion are approved for clinical use. An effective vaccine also should seek to stimulate long-term memory to prevent tumor recurrence. Some scientists claim both the innate and adaptive immune systems must be activated to achieve total tumor elimination. Tumor antigens have been divided into two categories, shared tumor antigens, and unique tumor antigens. Shared antigens are expressed by many tumors. Unique tumor antigens result from mutations induced through physical or chemical carcinogens, they are therefore expressed only by individual tumors. In one approach, vaccines contain whole tumor cells, though these vaccines have been less effective in eliciting immune responses in spontaneous cancer models. Defined tumor antigens decrease the risk of autoimmunity, but because the immune response is directed to a single epitope, tumors can evade destruction through antigen loss variants. A process called epitope spreading or provoked immunity may mitigate this weakness, as sometimes an immune response to a single antigen can lead to immunity against other antigens on the same tumor. For example, since HSP70 plays an important role in the presentation of antigens of destroyed cells including cancer cells, this protein may be used as an effective adjuvant in the development of anti-tumor vaccines. A vaccine against a particular virus is relatively easy to create. The virus is foreign to the body, and therefore expresses antigens that the immune system can recognize. Furthermore, viruses usually only provide a few viable variants. By contrast, developing vaccines for viruses that mutate constantly such as influenza or HIV has been problematic. A tumor can have many cell types of cells, each with different cell surface antigens. Those cells are derived from each patient and display few if any antigens that are foreign to that individual. This makes it difficult for the immune system to distinguish cancer cells from normal cells. Some scientists believe that renal cancer and melanoma are the two cancers with most evidence of spontaneous and effective immune responses possibly because they often display antigens that are evaluated as foreign. Many attempts at developing cancer vaccines are directed against these tumors. However, Provenge's success in prostate cancer, a disease that never spontaneously regresses, suggests that cancers other than melanoma and renal cancer may be equally amenable to immune attack. However, most vaccine clinical trials have failed or had modest according to the standard resist criteria. The precise reasons are unknown, but possible explanations include. In January 2009, a review article made recommendations for success as follows. Disease stage 2 advanced, bulky tumor deposits actively suppress the immune system using mechanisms such as secretion of cytokines that inhibit immune activity. The most suitable stage for a cancer vaccine is likely to be early, when the tumor volume is low, which complicates the trial process, which take upwards of five years and require many patients to reach measurable endpoints. One alternative is to target patients with residual disease after surgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy that does not harm the immune system, escape loss variants. The most effective vaccine is likely to raise an immune response against a broad range tumor antigens to minimize the chance of the tumor mutating and becoming resistant to the therapy, 
prior treatments may have modified tumors in ways that nullify the vaccine, some tumors progress rapidly and slash or unpredictably, and they can outpace the immune system. Developing a mature immune response to a vaccine may require months, but some cancers can kill patients in less time. Many cancer vaccine clinical trials target patients' immune responses. Correlations typically show that the patients with the strongest immune responses lived the longest, offering evidence that the vaccine is working. An alternative explanation is that patients with the best immune responses were healthier patients with a better prognosis, and would have survived longest even without the vaccine. Target settings with a low disease burden, conduct randomized phase 2 trials so that the phase 3 program is sufficiently powered, do not randomize antigen plus adjuvant versus adjuvant alone. The goal is to establish clinical benefit of the immunotherapy over the standard of care. The adjuvant may have a low-level clinical effect that skews the trial, increasing the chances of a false negative, base development decisions on clinical data rather than immune responses. Time to event endpoints are more valuable and clinically relevant, design regulatory into the program from inception invest in manufacturing and product assays early.